I was hoping some people would show up because it's Tuesday instead of Thursday, so I thought I might lose some people along the way. So thank you for coming. It's week four of EDS and HSD Awareness Month 2023. Um, I'm Jeannie Debon, and today we are talking about um, sleep. So this is a bedtime class. Um, so wherever you are in the world, um, you don't have to do it at bedtime. You could do it anytime you're feeling a bit stressed or in pain, um, but it is particularly designed for, hello, hi, yeah, let me know you're here. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's designed to calm everything down and really um, focus on getting us ready for a good night's sleep. Um, so welcome. So if you've been joining me for the other three weeks, hi there, lovely to see you. Um, so we've been wake up, energized. Last week was fatigue. Did anyone catch the fatigue class? Hi there, Heather, lovely to see you. So we had fatigue last week, which I got really good feedback about. I think um, I really enjoyed that class. Um, and so now we've gone full circle, we're now bedtime. Um, so as always, we do a little bit of education. Ah, oh, lovely to see all of you there. Hi everyone. Your first time joining. Oh, well, welcome. Welcome. So we do these live events normally once a month. Um, but because it was EDS Awareness Month, we've been doing one every week. So um, this is the last one for a while anyway. So um, I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Um, and it gives me the opportunity to... Um, oh, thank you. You enjoyed the fatigue class. Lovely. Um, these classes give me the opportunity to do a bit of research as well into a very specific topic. Um, so I attempted to do some research into EDS and sleep and there wasn't a lot out there. Um, and um, I, I then went to my trusty Zebra Club members who um, gave me loads of information about sleep disorders that they're going through. So really personal, um, lived experience. Um, but I thought I'd share with you some of the research. I found uh, three research papers, um, which are interesting. Hi there, Hilary, lovely to see you. Um, before we get started, actually, I've got a blanket today, even though it's quite hot in the UK for a change. Um, so you might wanna grab a blanket or a towel, because at the end, we're just gonna relax and settle in and, um, yeah, you don't have to, but it might be quite nice to just get nice and cosy under a blanket um, at the end of the class when we do our relaxation. So let's talk research and sleep disorders. So why might we need a bedtime class? So, you know, calming the nervous system, as you know, breath and relaxation are the first two principles in my hypermobility movement method. Um, ever since you know this came to light and I started talking about it back in 2017 um, I realized the importance of relaxation because so many of us have had you know I talk about this so often the bracing patterns the tension the muscular armor held in our tissue um, that inhibits our movement it inhibits our breath it stops us relaxing um, you know we also have things like pots and causing um, elevated heart rates and that can make us anxious and so we've got this whole mixing pot that goes into why relaxation is is important and when it comes to bedtime there can be an anxiety around bedtime for many reasons and you know the anxiety of whether I'm going to have a good night's sleep um, is enough for us not to have a good night's sleep so um, let's talk about the research so I found one paper from 2018 um, now, this was looking at sleep disorders in children, so under 18s with EDS, and this was a retrospective study, so they looked back at um, medical records of 65 under 18 year olds with EDS. And what they found was there was a high prevalence of sleep disorders, which included insomnia, hypersomnia, and periodic limb movement disorder so i presume that's you know when the mo the limbs are just um moving on sort of in a sort of a spasming way um i meant to look that up and find out exactly what it was but that's what they found um, and that was in children and then another study from 2013 
looking at sleep disordered breathing. We were just talking about, oh, welcome, another first timer, welcome. Um, we were just talking about breathing and how important, you know, I think working on our breathing patterns are if you've got this condition. But there was a study into 34 patients with EDS and they all had what they, they call sleep disordered breathing. So SDB, sleep disordered breathing, um, caused by sleep apnea. Now I know a lot of people do have sleep apneas and flow limitations. And the conclusion was um, abnormal breathing is commonly unrecognized in EDS. Uh, who would agree with that? <laughs> yeah. I think there's a lot of things that are commonly unrecognized, aren't they, in EDS? And breathing is just one of them. <laughs> um, but this sleep disordered breathing is responsible for poor daytime fatigue and poor sleep quality. So if you're not breathing properly, um, that's going to impact the sleep. Um, and then another study, my last study from 2016, it was for people with POTS. And I know a lot of us have that comorbidity yeah sleep paralysis yes yeah lots of different lots of different things um so this one's interesting so people with pots sleep disturbance this was a study of 30 patients so none of these studies are huge so they're quite small sample sizes but you know they give us an idea um so of these 30 patients 97 percent reported fatigue 94% said they had low energy during the day and 83% did not wake up feeling well rested. So who can um, resonate with that? That sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? 63% um, had trouble falling asleep and 62% had trouble maintaining sleep. Okay, so that and that came up in our little zebra club survey that a lot of people have trouble actually once you're asleep maintaining the sleep. So lots of waking up during the night. Yeah, lots of people saying yes to that. Now this is the really sad thing, and I say it's sad, but it's also not really unsurprising given um, our history, as it were. A very, very low percentage of those, okay, we're only talking 30 people, but still, I think this is gonna apply to a lot more people. Hardly any of them sought help for their sleep problems. Now, I think that's really indicative, really, that um, why, why are people not seeking help? And um, is that because we, you know, it might be dismissed, it's not taken seriously, is it this whole, you know, fear that we have of the um you know medical um you know our interactions with the medical professionals sometimes i just thought that was really sort of sad that people are suffering and they didn't seek they didn't even seek help it's not that they got help and it didn't work they didn't even seek it um and yet we know sleep is so important um so yeah that was the only research <laughs> Okay, yes, lots of comments coming in on that. Um, yes, so that was the official research. Um, in our unofficial Zebra Club research, here are some of the reasons why people don't sleep well. So constant waking up in the night, which we've just seen is also backed up by the research. Every couple of hours, people are waking up, getting comfortable, and that's a biggie, isn't it? If you're in pain, if you're suffering from subluxations, etc. And we, you know, I did a video a couple of years ago on um, pillows. You know, just the mere fact of what sort of pillow should I have is a huge topic. It's one of my most watched videos. It's like a video on pillows for hypermobility. So getting comfortable is um, really troublesome for a lot of people. Waking up tired. And we've just heard in the research that a huge number of people had that. Sleep apnea, we know that's a problem. Heart rate spikes, so, um, and adrenaline surges, so they kind of, kind of go together. So again, if you've got POTS, um, mast cells, etc., or, you know, different um, dysautonomias, that can be happening in your sleep. 
Waking up with headaches, gosh yes, I can relate to that. Those morning headaches, where do they come from? Absolutely awful. Um, difficulty falling asleep, as we heard from the research. Having a busy mind, well that's what I'm hoping I can help with today, is getting comfortable and calming a busy mind. Um, waking up, I can't read my own writing. That's terrible, isn't it? I think it says waking up in pain, but I can't actually read my own writing. Um, and night sweats. Um, and, you know, night sweats for lots of different reasons. Always get night sweats checked out, though, if you are having those. I certainly had them, um, but that was menopausal. Um, so I know how horrible night sweats are. But always good to get these things checked out if you're suffering, if that's a new symptom for you. Um, so that's what the research says. It's a problem. But no, there's no sort of real solutions for it. Um, so we're going to try and, um, yes, just started getting night sweats. There, yeah, you have my sympathy. They are not pleasant at all, are they? Um, so we're going to try and move today um, very gently, as I say, preparing us for a good night's sleep, hopefully. So maybe you're watching this back or you're going to do it again later if it's not bedtime where you are. Um, and it is to hopefully calm a busy mind, help us relax, help us get comfortable and just kind of sink down into some sleep, um, sleep mood as it were. So, as I said, grab a blanket if you want to, maybe grab a head cushion. I've got my head cushion, you don't need to, that's going to depend on your neck. But of course, if we're preparing for, for sleep, even more important than... Um, other times to be super comfortable yeah um because you're going to be there for however many hours so we want to get you comfortable if at the end of class you want to stay and just continue the relaxation that's fine i will just end the video um, and please stay and enjoy the relaxation okay shall we get started let's i'm just going to move my camera so you can see and I'm going to come over and show, sorry guys, that's it. Okay, so find a comfortable seat. We're just actually going to start, you can't really see my feet, um, with our feet actually. So we don't often pay a lot of attention to our feet. Don't worry, I'm only sitting here for a minute, so it doesn't matter if my head's been cut off. Um, so wherever you can, if you're on a chair or if you're on the floor, just, um, we're going to start with a little bit of um, massage, very gentle of our feet. Okay, so we don't really pay attention to our feet unless they're hurting. And of course, many of us do have painful gait and painful feet. So go gentle. We're not beating ourselves up. We're just gently massaging, and I'm just using my thumbs, the underside of our feet. And obviously, if you've got very hypermobile fingers, go gentle. And if you don't like doing this, some people don't like touching their feet, right? Um, don't do it. But, you know, just sit and maybe just gently massage further up, maybe around the ankles. Um, but I find them very relaxing. You might find some really sore bits in here, especially underneath around the arches. People are often quite sore. So just nice to, what we're gonna do, we did a bit of it last week. We kind of worked up the body, didn't we? Um, so we're again gonna try and address all the different areas of the body. So just coming around to the back of the heel, can you just massage around the heel bone here? And maybe just come around the back and just massage around the Achilles. And again, go gentle because you'd be surprised how sore some of these areas can get. And just find that Achilles and just give yourself a little massage. And then maybe gently, just seeing what the calves feel like today. So again, I see so many tight calf muscles and I that's really comes down to gait a lot of the time yeah so how are we actually articulating our lower limb and our foot so maybe you're someone who has tight calf muscles as well so if you get cramps in the night that didn't come up actually but I bet some people get cramps in the night um, so we want to keep these calf muscles um, nicely hydrated and just gently moving the fascia so we're definitely not beating ourselves up this shouldn't be excruciating pain 
you're just gently feeling and massaging a little bit, okay? So don't go and be too aggressive with yourself. Good. And then just come to rest. And we're just going to do the same with our hands. So again, gently, gently, just have a little, I'm just gently pressing, giving my hands a little massage. Again, be careful if you've got really mobile thumb joints. Don't go and hurt yourself. You just, just see how that feels. Again, just having that touch can be really nice and relaxing. You know, looking after ourselves, giving ourselves some self-care at the end of the day. And then we're going to interlace our fingers and we're just going to do some gentle wrist circles. So just by doing this, we're also getting into the forearm. Okay, so gently, again, I'm gentle, I'm slow. Try not to let your elbows fly around all over the place. Try and keep your elbows quiet and gently just move. Try and think of a figure of eight, if that's good for you. If you like having a direction. That's it, good. Okay, and then we're going to come and lie down. So we're going to lie on our back. So head cushion if you need it. Okay, blanket nearby. Okay, hopefully yeah, you can see me. Okay, so cushions, whatever you need to feel nice and comfy. Make yourself comfy. And we're just going to, actually, we're going to take a nice big sigh. Okay, so when you sigh, it kind of resets the nervous system. So we're just going to take a breath in. And out through the mouth, we're going to sigh. And just let that go. And you can do that again, gently. It doesn't have to be a violent inhale. In through the nose. And sigh it out through the mouth if you can. Notice when you sigh how everything sinks a little bit more. And one more time, inhale. And just let it go. Sigh it out. Lovely. Really nice. So fingers, toes, feet, hands have had a little bit of movement. So just gently moving your feet a little bit. So picking up the heels, just rolling through the foot, just nice and slow. So if you've done any of my sleep classes before, you'll know that I talk a lot about rolling patterns because I think that the rolling actions are very soothing for the nervous system um, and they help calm things down. So we're going to be doing a lot of rolling today because I think that's the best way of helping us get to sleep. So we're just rolling through our feet. And just feeling that movement. Again, we were talking about having tight calves. So here, we're just obviously moving and getting the calf pump going a little bit. Good. Now, from there, just come to stillness. You can let your knees sort of roll together if that's comfy, so you don't have to hold them up. And let's put one hand on our heart and one hand on our belly, if that works. And just take a moment to feel the breath. So no sighing now, just gentle, gentle breath. Just a moment to really check in. And this is the moment that we can recognize if we've got a busy mind. So we learned that having a busy mind was definitely interfering with people's sleep. So can you really just focus on the breath? Feel it coming and going, feeling the exhale drawing you down into the floor. But notice your mind, is your mind happy to do that? So part of being able to sleep is that ability to quieten the mind, which can be really challenging depending on what sort of day you've had and what's going on in your life. So I invite you as you soften your physical body, you soften the bones on the exhale and you soften the tissues. Can you soften your mind, whatever that means to you? So if you could go inside your head right now and you saw the inside of your head, could you soften whatever you consider to be your mind? 
And I always get a sense of the inside of my head, you know, the connective tissue inside my head softening. And invite the mind to soften. And when I do that, I get this really lovely feeling of space and sort of emptiness in the head. But again, it's going to be individual. You know, that's my sensation. It might mean something totally different to you, or it might not mean anything at all. But two more rounds of breath, just inviting softness into your head quieting down the mind and really being present in your body, feeling your body on the ground, feeling your bones resting on the ground. And we haven't got anywhere to go, we've got nothing to do apart from being here. Lovely. Now, the, the challenge is, is to try and keep that quiet mind while we continue to move. So I'm just gonna bring my legs back to vertical, bring my forearms vertical, and I'm just gonna do those wrist circles again, but separate now. So I'm just moving the wrists. Now I'm going, can you notice how slowly I'm going? I'm not doing this, I'm not just throwing my hands around. I'm being really mindful. Now my mind might get annoyed and it might wanna start thinking about other things and think, oh, this, what's this? You know, what good is this doing? You've got to bring that mind back to the moment. You've got to settle it again. Okay, so if your mind starts to wander, that's perfectly normal, but the challenge is, can you train it to come back? That's what we're looking for. That's when you start to get a quieter mind. So when you can't sleep at night, and maybe you're focusing on a body scan, or a relaxation, or a meditation tape, or can you keep coming back even though you start thinking about other stuff? That's how you train your mind. So from here, come to stillness. We talked about that, didn't we? The stillness, the movement that is within stillness. And then we're going to very slowly, remember, float those arms up, shoulders get heavier. So let the weight, anything you've been carrying with you today, emotionally, just let that drop off your shoulders into the floor. Let it go. Give that to the floor. Give your arm bones to the floor. And let that settle you. Now, we did our wrist circles. We're now actually going to think about gently moving the whole arm in a circular motion. Again, I'm not just going to start throwing them around. I'm going to keep my upper arm bones heavy and try and draw a circle. So they might go in opposite directions, they might go the same. Mine was going opposite directions. You might be doing the same direction, it doesn't really matter. But your objective is to keep heavy. Now, I always want to start tensing up in my mid-back because I want to take control and do that. And maybe you're the same. So can you let your mid-back really relax? This is all about letting go, right? If we've got a tight thorax because we've been bracing and guarding, that thorax is going to want to take control of this, and we've got to go, no, let it settle. Now, these circles can get as big as you want as long as your upper arm bones are staying heavy. So if you want to go big and you can control it, that's fine, but you're not doing this. We're not throwing our arms around. We're staying heavy, and we're basically rolling the upper arm bone in the shoulder socket. And if there's any pain or anything like that, reduce your range. I should remember, don't do anything that's not right for you today. Look after yourselves, um, listen to your body. Let's reverse our circles. And notice if your thorax is resting on the mat or is it trying to get involved? What's your breath doing? And then come to stillness again, really still. Arms are suspended above you. And then we're just going to gently open the chest as far as you want to go. 
and just feel the skin across your chest stretch. Maybe you feel the stretch all the way down the inside of your arms. Has the thorax been able to rest or has it decided to come off the floor? So check in and then bring it back. Are those arm bones still heavy on the ground? And just breathe. And then we're going to start to bend the elbows, very soft. A little bend of the elbows as we're coming back down, very soft. And then just let your hands rest wherever they want to rest. Actually, let's rest them on the pelvis, because we're going to do some pelvic movement. Before we get to the pelvis, let's just roll, if your neck's okay, can we just gently roll the head from side to side? So neck tension, shoulder tension, very, very common, isn't it? So how does this feel? And again, try and keep the head heavy. So I'm not throwing my head around using bigger muscles. I'm gently rolling, feeling gravity taking my head. That's it. And then just come to the centre again. And let's start circling the pelvis if we can. So let's just go forward and back for a moment. Just forward and back. So a gentle rocking motion, like you would, you know, a baby, a gentle rocking. Treat your pelvis as you would, you know, something very delicate, or holding a child or a pet, just gently moving it, just rocking it to sleep. Rocking it forward and back. And now let's try and do a circle. So can I circle around? Very nice to do pelvic movement before bed because if you've been sitting a lot, your lower back is stiff. It's really nice to get this moving again. So we'll just do three in each direction. If you can't do a circle, just stick to the forward and back if it's painful. Very nice. So we're just rolling around, really rolling on that mat. Good. And then we're going to take one leg up and I'm going to hold it. So I'm just going to hold on to it for a moment and just let that settle. And let's just do our ankle circles while we're here. Another favourite of mine, good for the calf pump again, for anyone who gets those cramps. And the other way. you can bring the other one up too so you've got both legs in the air just for a second and just hug into you if you've got hip impingement obviously don't hug too much don't do it you might want to take the legs out to the side and just have a little rounding of your lower back so your pelvis is going to come off a little bit and then put that first leg down and then you can hold behind this leg and do your circles Notice, does it feel different one ankle to the other? Why that might be, what's going on there? Okay, and then come to stillness. And if you can pick that other leg back up, still holding on to it, still lifting my pelvis a little bit, holding on to the front of my shins. And I'm just going to now do my double knee circles. So I'm going to send the pelvis around. So the pelvis is moving. Don't try and keep your pelvis still and let it roll. So today is about rolling the pelvis. We're gonna let it roll. Again, super nice for tight lower backs. Really, really nice. Just don't pull on your kneecaps if you've got very hypermobile kneecaps. Let's go the other way. So I'm kind of holding below my kneecap. Depends on arm length, of course, doesn't it? where we can actually get our hands to. Lovely, good, okay. Now I'm gonna put one leg down, keep hold of one leg, slide the other leg away if you can, okay? Just make sure you haven't sort of collapsed forward, so you haven't got a big arch in your back now. So keep the pelvis heavy, and you're still hugging this leg in, so you might be getting a bit of a hip opener here. 
And then what we're going to try and do is do a single leg circle. So the leg could go into a right angle or you could keep it down here. Okay, and we're going to try and circle one leg. So this is a little, I've thrown in a little bit of stability work here, okay. So I've slipped that one in, a little bit of pelvic stability um, while we're getting ready for bed. It's, we're not doing this. So can you see the difference? I'm not throwing myself around. Yeah, it can be really small, but can you move in that socket without losing your weighty pelvis? Let's go the other way. Always good to have a little bit of stability work now. Other leg heavy, that will help with the stability. Good, give it one little hug before you pop that one back down on the floor. Slide the other one in, take the other one away and lift this one up and enjoy a little stretch here. A few breaths into the hip, might feel very different, that's okay. And then we're gonna try, however you're doing it, your knee circles. So again, heavy pelvis, heavy rib cage. Circle can be super small. Remember, it's not about the range, it's about the control. Now, it doesn't need to be big, but what it does need is control. There we go. Is the other hip staying heavy? Again, if you're clunky, if you're someone who has clunky hips, make the range smaller still. Okay, that's fine. Some of us have clunky hips. Lovely. Give it another little hug and then pop it back down. Draw the other one back in. So you're back into your supine position. Okay. Zigzagging our feet. The favourite windscreen wipers. We're going to add in some arms actually in a minute. Before we do that, let's just float those arms. You've already had them up. So let's float them up and then take them overhead. So I've got wide legs, but I've taken my arms overhead obviously not arching the back. And now feeling the weight of the shoulders, bringing the arms all the way back down. Keep that weight in the back of the shoulders so your arm doesn't start to pop off the floor. So up we go, up and over, keep the pelvis and ribs heavy, and then bring it back. So we just did that because we're gonna add in an arm in a moment to our windscreen wipers. So we're going to roll towards the camera, okay, opening the hip, feeling the pelvis lift and roll, exhaling, dropping, you can even sigh it back, and rolling the other way. Exhale, sigh it back. Lovely. One more each side. Again, can be as big or as small as you want, but I don't really want collapsing legs. So if you're kind of flopping from side to side like this, we don't want. We want a little bit more control and really enjoy feeling the weight of your pelvis. So here we go. If I go towards the camera, I'm going to take my opposite arm overhead. I'm going to gently turn my head if my neck allows to look towards the arm. I'm not, I can't see it, but I'm looking towards it. And then I'm coming back. Okay, so I'm getting a full body rolling action. Okay, but it's not about, you sh you're not trying to see your hand or anything like that. You're just turning your head in the opposite direction to your legs, if your neck allows. If you don't like that, don't do the head turn. You can still just do this. You don't have to turn your head, it's absolutely fine. Very nice, good. Now, from there, we're going to turn over. Um, now, what we're gonna do actually is come all the way over. I was gonna change my mind and do something else. So, um, can you see me? Let me just move my camera up again. Sorry, see my hand there. Okay, so coming on to all fours. If you don't like hands, you can be down on your forearms. Um, if you don't like this at all, you can sit on a chair and or put your hands on a chair um, or you can sit and do a sort of a seated cat. So, 
Here we go, rolling cat. So this is a rolling flowing cat. Okay, so we're going to tuck our tail. No pushing. Remember, we're rolling. Think of the vertebra rolling. So I come into my cat. Shoulders have slid off my ribs. And I'm going to hinge backwards a little bit just to where my knees are comfortable. Now I'm going to try and uncurl my pelvis, roll into a sort of a cat cow or a flat back if I don't like cat cow. And then I'm going to come forward. So we're going to round. We're going to hinge. We're going to uncurl and lengthen. No pressure on the arms. And then the arms take pressure again. So if you don't like wrist pain, um, wrist weight bearing, we're not hanging around too long because now there's no weight in my hands. And then out and forward. Now we're going to go the other way. We're going to hinge backwards. We're going to tuck the tail and we're going to roll through the spine and then come back. So I hinge, I tuck. And then the spine is lifted back up into my cat. And then one more time, hinge, round, and lift, 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 all the way back up. And then we'll all come down onto a puppy pose. You can interlace your fingers if you like. And just gently wag that tail. So, and you can feel the spine moving as well. You just have a little wag from side to side. Lovely. Good. Okay, very nice. Now, I'm going to come around. I'm going to come back to sit. Um, wide legs, or as wide as you want. Okay, so when you're getting ready to sleep, I think it's all about coming in, shutting everything else out, very much coming into yourself. So a little bit of forward folding can be very calming very nice for relieving anxiety as well so however you want to do this you can have your arms here you can have them here you can have them on the floor it doesn't really matter because we're more interested in the forward fold okay you can have straight legs you can have semi-bent legs you can have fully bent legs it really doesn't matter what it looks like it's how it feels okay so whatever works for your body and we're just interested in coming in a little bit for ourselves. So take a breath in, and then a small nod of the head before you start to send your pelvis forward. So if I tip my pelvis forward, I'm gonna come into this sort of forward fold. So I haven't gone very far, but I am now looking down at the floor. My shoulders are relaxed. So it's a bit like a child's pose, I guess. If you don't like child's pose, here's another option. So you're going to breathe into your back, really close your eyes here and just feel yourself cocooning into this. And then to get back, the pelvis rolls back up. So I don't pull anything. I could do this with straighter legs yeah, and I could have my arms up. So again, different variations for different people. So I'm going to tip forward again. I'm not going to go very far because I just don't have that range. You know, I've got very stiff hips. Everything else is mobile, but not my hips. So this is me and I can direct my, let my hands come down and I can just breathe. And again, just enjoy that. I can back off on my knees if it's too pulling on my legs, it's fine. And then how do I get back? I roll back up through the pelvis. Okay, let's do one more. So a little nod of the head, however you're doing it, you can do a semi-bent leg and just come forward. Again, shoulders relax, make sure that neck is nice and free, the jaw is free. Shoulders soft. And then rolling back up. Lovely. And then come into whatever position is comfortable, whether it's cross-legged or like this. Whatever works for you, or if you're sitting on a chair, and let's just roll those shoulders out. So again, very controlled, not kind of not doing this and not driving it from the elbow, really thinking of lifting the shoulder blades and mine are crunching. I don't know if yours are crunching, but mine crunch. 
and just coming up and around. Very nice, good. And then a little bit of a gentle side sway, not even a side bend. Let's not think of bending. Let's just think of swaying from side to side. Just really soft, really, really soft. Gentle, gentle. If you don't like the arms, you can just kind of move like this from side to side. We're just flowing the spine. Yeah. But if you like the arms, you get a really lovely feeling down your side body. Lovely, good, really nice. Let's come into prayer position. And again, I think I talked about this last week or the week before, how I like that, because it helps me reset my shoulders. I really feel that I'm in my back body in this position. Widens the collarbones. So make sure you're not here in your prayer position. Your collarbones are wide. Then if you can, it doesn't have to be big, keep your thumbs at your sternum and just do a little gentle rotation. Again, not about who can go furthest, who can just move, keeping that width across the chest. Very nice, good. And then come back and just roll it out. Beautiful. Now, let's grab our blankets, if we're doing blankets. Grab some cushions. Let's come and lie down for a little bit of a relaxation um, meditation. This is way too heavy for today. The only warm day we've had in the UK and I've got a big woolen blanket. So I'll be sweltering in a minute. So here we go. Let's get comfy. You don't have to have a blanket, of course, but just make sure you're warm enough because we're not going to be moving now. So let's settle down, get our blankets. So you can have bent legs, you can have straight legs. If you can tolerate straight legs, <clears throat> Maybe you need a cushion under your legs, but if you can, let's go for straight legs today. If that's a no-no for your back, obviously bend your legs. So palms facing up. Just give yourself a little wiggle. Make sure you're nice and comfy, you're nice and warm, especially your feet. Make sure your feet are warm. And let's go ahead and close our eyes. So we rolled around on the mat, kept it low, so no standing up. Keeping low to the ground. Now one thing we didn't talk about was the jaw. And I know a lot of us wear um, mouth guards at night because we grind our teeth. Yeah, so I'm definitely guilty of that. So, um, and that causes a lot of TMJ pain. So let's allow the jaw to soften. And let the weight of the head just fall into the pillow or the floor. And again, check back in with your mind. So is your mind still quiet? So if it's not, can we soften the mind? And invite some space inside. Eyes are soft, jaw is soft. We're just going to spend a moment feeling again the body weight. And taking a moment to notice how you feel as in how weighty you feel. Don't try and analyze it, just notice how you feel. So don't go into your thinking brain, not now. Stay with your sensory brain. And find a place that gives you joy and pleasure. So in your mind, where would it be where if you were just in your most favourite place where you feel safe and happy. Create that now inside your mind. Maybe you can hear 
different sounds or smells or whatever it is that you like about that place. Just go there now. And just enjoy the stillness. said earlier that the most challenging thing is training the thoughts not to wander off and keep bringing them back to this sensation, this place that's your special place. It can even be a made up place, it really doesn't matter. But whatever makes you feel good. And then you're just going to, in your own mind, scan your body from head to toe. And just work your way through in your own time, noticing if there's anything that's still resisting. Trying to do a little inventory through every bone, every muscle, all the way down. Until you get to your feet. And just really allowing the armor, the muscular armor, to fall away. And it's not just the muscular armor, it's the emotional armor, the protection that we have. Just let it fall away. Feel yourself in this lovely little cocoon of your own fascia. Beautiful. So if you want to stay here, please do. Enjoying being with your body, being in the moment, breathing, sensing. If you need to get up, then we're just going to start to gently move our fingers, maybe bend the arm, start to wiggle the fingers, and start to wiggle the toes. Maybe start doing some of those wrist circles and ankle circles again, just moving the body. Good. And if you haven't opened your eyes, next time you exhale, open your eye, come back into the room. We want to keep that quietness. See how long you can keep the quietness in your mind for the rest of the day, the rest of the evening, wherever you are. Okay, so I'm going to roll to my side before I get up. So just take a moment. Really important we don't just jump up, um, especially if you've got pots. So just take a moment. Just get yourself ready. And then very slowly, using your hands if you need to, to bring yourself up. I'm going to keep my blanket as I come into a comfortable seat. You might want to put that around your shoulders, but just keep that feeling with you for a moment as you come into your comfortable seat. Hands resting on your legs, wherever feels nice for you. Good. And just take a moment to sit, feeling the weight of the pelvis. And again, feeling that quietness inside. And I don't I need to yawn now, so it's obviously done something. So maybe that's made you a little bit sleepy. Um, so yawning is a good thing, it's a good sign. Lovely. So thank you very much for your time today. And thank you very much for your time all the other weeks of this EDS and HSD Awareness Month. Um, I really enjoy doing these classes um, with you and I really appreciate you giving up your time to, um, to move with me. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the little series. 
Um, they're, on you, they're on the channel, so they're saved under the live tab, so you can go back and watch them anytime you like. Um, and let me know how you get on, and I will see you again soon for another live. Probably going to take June off. Thank you. Oh, thank you, everyone. Oh, very relaxing. Good, good. That's what we want. So we want to quieten down that mind. We want to get comfy. We want to feel safe. Yeah, when we go to bed, we want to feel really safe in our own bodies. Ah, oh, brilliant. I'm so glad you all enjoyed that. Um, so we'll probably take June off. I'm going to have a little rest um, <laughs> from these, but I'll be back. Maybe, well, who knows? Who knows? Because um, I do enjoy doing these. Um, so thank you again. Enjoy the rest of um, EDS month, EDS HSD month. Um, and um, I hope to see you again soon uh, at um, either here or in the Zebra Club or maybe at the EDS conference. Um, so yes, have en enjoy the rest of May. I'm a bit sleepy now, you can tell, can't you? Can't get my words out. Um, enjoy the rest of May, enjoy the rest of the month. I really, really appreciate your time um, and come back and see me soon. And um, as Again, thank you. See you all soon. Bye bye.